Hello my dears, welcome to today's video. In this video, you will learn a beautiful poem named as Lokinwa. And this poem was written by Sir Walter Scott. Lokinwa is a ballad about romance and courage. Oh, young Lokinwa is come out of the west. Through all the wide border, his steed was the best, and save his good broadsword, he weapons had none. He rode all unharmed, and he rode all alone, so faithful in love, and so dauntless in war. There never was a knight like the young Lokinwa. The poem starts with the introduction of the hero by the name of Lokinwa. He is courageous knight an undeterred romantic. He is described as the dawning of the sun. The brave heart is a skilled fighter and needs no other weapon than his stately sword to send terror down his enemy's spine. He is a soul crusader who enters the field of battle with total confidence in his abilities and swordsmanship. Another striking trait of Lokinwa is a loyalty and firmness in love. He loves Alan, who is getting married to a timid and lethargic man. She and Lokinwa is a perfect match, but Alan's father, the king, disapproves of the knight. He stayed not for break and he stopped not for stone. He swam the Eske river, where ford there was none, but ere he, but ere he alighted at Netherby gate, the bride had consented, the gallant came late, for a laggard in love and a dastard in war was to wed the fair Ellen of brave Lokinwa. Now the poet describes various feats and accomplishments of the young Lokinwa. He never leaves any battle half fought. He is tireless in his pursuit of the victory and glory. He has swum through River Eske, which is very deep and fast, where it was being crossed by some stream. It was a deep river that he crossed bravely and without any fear. But his final and most difficult battle is at the Netherby Gate, where his beloved Ellen has agreed to marry another man, who is not worthy of her beauty and grace. Now he has arrived at the battle to win back his lost love. Ellen considers Lokinwa, coward who left her behind in the war of love. He was heartbroken and disillusioned by Lokinwa's passion for wars over love. So boldly he entered the Netherby Hall, among bridesmen and kinsmen and brothers and all. Then spoke the bride's father, his hand on his sword, for the poor Carvan bridegroom said never a word, Oh, ye come in peace here, or come a in war, or to dance at our bridal, young Lord Lokinwa. Now the knight gets off at the hall. His presence sends a fluter in the crowd of women, men and Ellen's family. His arrival is considered an open act of outrage, brave but offensive. However, the meek groom doesn't even offer a syllable of challenge. So it was the king who thunders a resounding declaration at Lukinwa. He inquires if he had come to fight or you his blessings to the marrying couple. I long owed you a daughter, my suit you deny. Love swells like the Solway, but ebbs like its tide. And now am I come with this lost love of mine to lead but one major, drink one cup of wine. There are maidens in Scotland, more lovely by far that would 
gladly be bride to the young Lochinwar. Lochinwar was equally rebellious and bold in his reply. He said that he had already given up his pursuit of Ellen, as the king had previously rejected his marriage proposal. He reassures Ellen and her people that he had only come to dance and drink in celebration. He goes on to the proclaim that there was numerous maidens in Scotland more beautiful and desirable than Alan who would be jumping at the chance of marrying the young gallant hero the bride kissed the goblet the knight took it up he coughed off the wine and he threw down the cup he looked down to blush and she looked up to shy with a smile on her lips and a tear in her eye he took her soft hand Her, her mother could bar now tread we a major said young lokinwar alan offers lokinwar a glass of wine after sanctifying it with a kiss the knight received it and drank it in one breath and threw the glass in anger he is tormented by the fact that alan married another man and betrayed his love However, he offers a final dance together. Alan is hurt at his contempt but agrees. The lovers had untied again. She kept blushing unable to think clearly, but she kept a smile on her face signifying the upwelling affections for looking on. Her eyes are soaked with tears. at the prospect of marrying another man and losing him forever tucks at her heart strings such mixed emotions were tearing her from inside he took one dance with the bride after she blessed his wine so stately his form and so lovely her face that never a hall such a gallery did grace while her mother did fret and her father did fume and the bridegroom stood dangling his bonnet and plume and the bride's maidens whispered they were better by far to have matched our fair cousin with young looking one the pair danced and enraptured the whole crowd looking one's stature and strength complimented ellen's dignity and grace the whole hall was sparkled with their stately presence Alan's mother was anxious, her father angry, and the groom helplessly and humiliated. They could not do anything to drive a wedge between the reunited lovers. The bride's maids were entranced by the perfect match of Alan and Lokinwa as they collapsed across the floor. There were soft cries of delight and admiration at the divine match they both made. one a touch to her hand and one word in her ear when they reached the hall door and the charger stood near so light to the crook the fair lady he swung so light to the saddle before her he sprung she is one we are gone over bank bush and scaur they will have fleet steeds that follow quoth young looking man Lokinwar touched Ellen's hand and whispered in her ear it was as if their disaffection for his separation just melted away she was hypnotized by his love they both ran across the hall and reached for the lokinwar's horse he flung her on the horse and rose to take the reins in his hands determined and rebellious lokinwar proclaimed that he had won back his love and rode as hard as he could to get away from the chasing pack of Alan's kinsmen they were mounting mong greenness of the netherby clan frosters fenwicks and musgraves they rode and they ran 
there was a racing and chasing on Kenobi Lee. But the lost bride of Netherby never did they see. So daring in love and so dauntless in war. Have you ever heard of gallant like young Lochinvar? The various clans of Scotland could not muster enough power to arrest the fleeting couple and impression their unfettered love. Ultimately, they relented, and Alan was never seen again in the region. She and her beloved rode in victoriously into the sunset. The story of Lochinvar became the favorite fable for the people, so much so that it was considered unmatched in terms of its heroism, romanticism, gallantry, and lion-heartedness. The poem Lochinvar links beautifully details of romance, war, and relationships, and power play. It is also celebrates. the triumph of love over conflict and heroic actions over pompous statements even though there is no clear fighting in the poem it has a wealth of implied and cold moments of battle and one unmanship and a final victory